All right, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So we actually have a very interesting video that we need to get to today. I wanna address what's going on here because Republicans are starting to fire the first shot. And I wanna explain how lawmakers plan on saving SNAP benefits, because again, this is big. So if you wanna know how Republicans plan on fixing the SNAP benefits program or how they plan on uh, reducing the amount of money the federal government spends on food assistance, all you gotta do is stick around for this in video and I will explain what is currently being talked about today. Also, we are doing a, a live video, haven't done a live video in uh, uh, probably about a year, maybe a little bit longer than that. So if you like and enjoy live videos, then uh, hit that like button. Also comment down in the comment section and uh, I'll probably do a little bit more of them in the future. So here's what we know. So over the past few years, we have been getting a, uh, a, a lot of questions regarding the SNAP benefits program. One of the reasons why we're getting a lot of questions surrounding this program is because more families are able to get access to food assistance. And it's because of the whole pandemic and the additional SNAP benefits and things like that. So over the past three years, we've seen the increase in monthly benefits. Now, there's really only two reasons why right now um, we are seeing um, you know, more lawmakers discuss this is because first, the supplemental allotments, they ended on March 1st. So that was, what, 13, 14 days ago. So that's one reason. And another reason why we're getting more lawmakers discussing SNAP benefits, well, mainly Republicans, is because they're attempting to balance the federal budget, which means they're going to uh, go after unnecessary spending. Now, I'm not saying that uh, SNAP benefits is considered unnecessary spending, but according to a group of Republicans, they say, and I quote, the amount of Americans getting SNAP benefits is too high and it should be reduced. Now, this is how they plan on doing that. What we know is that there's a group of 23 House Republicans that are introducing today a bill that would make it harder for some recipients to get access to SNAP benefits. For example, uh, Representative Dusty Johnson, he's the one that's gonna introduce this bill and he would actually expand the current restrictions on who would even qualify for benefits. We also know that Democrats and Republicans, like I said, they're fighting over the debt ceiling. They also need to uh, figure out the fiscal year 2024 federal budget. And because of those things, this is why we're gonna see these negotiations and these fights, okay? Now, here's what I can tell you. The expectation though, is that this negotiation is starting for SNAP benefits now. Remember, lawmakers are still looking for ways to improve uh, you know, social security uh, and Medicare. They're also trying to figure out ways to keep them solvent for the next 50 to potentially 75 years. And at this point, they just can't come up with anything. All right, so, and again, that's a problem. Now, here's what I can tell you. In this bill, okay, for SNAP benefits, it would expand the age bracket for abled bodies recipients without dependents. Okay, it would it expand it, I believe, by 10 years. Now, it not only that, but it would it would make it harder and a little more complicated, uh, you know, based around the work requirements. The bill would also limit the federal government's ability to waive work requirements for states that Republicans are saying are abusing loopholes in the system. And one of the loopholes, again, is the age, okay, and the work requirements. And this is from the, the SNAP benefit website, uh, usda.gov. Okay, this is what this says. Look at this. So there's two general sets of requirements. You can see them right here. If you are age 16 to 59 and able to work, you will probably need to meet the general work requirements to get SNAP benefits. The general work requirements include registering for work, participating in SNAP employment and training or ENT, and workfare is assigned by your state SNAP agencies, uh, agency taking a suitable job if offered and not voluntarily quitting a job or reducing your work hours below 30 a week without a good reason. Or you are excused from the general work requirements if you are any one of these things and it is already working at least 30 hours a week or earning wages at least equal to the federal minimum wage multiplied by 30 hours, meeting work requirements 
for another program, such as TANF or unemployment compensation, taking care of a child under the age of six, or an incapacitated person, unable to work due to a physical or mental limitation, participating regularly in an alcohol or drug treatment program, and studying in school or a training program at least half time by college students or are subject to other eligibility rules. Those are the work requirements. Republicans say that some states are uh, abusing the loopholes, so they want to close that down. I will address sending some, uh, I'll address uh, uh, some questions in just a minute as well. Um, because again, and I know I, I, I say this in every single video, if you have any questions, always ask her, ask the questions down in the comment section below. Somebody called me out and says, well, we would, but you never answer the questions. Uh, and something that I have said in the past is, I like to answer the questions in a video form, which is why I try to do three videos a day, if not you know, more, uh, because you guys ask questions and I try to pick apart those questions and answer them in a video. So again, thank you guys for always asking the questions and doing that. Now, Here's something that I think is uh, very interesting to note as well, and that is that there's actually multiple proposals on the table for work requirements. And uh, you, you probably already guessed it, but yes, these are all from Republicans. Republicans are dead set on balancing the federal budget. And unless this happens, and until this happens, many Republicans have already stated that they're not going to vote for a bill that doesn't include this. So that's a Republican standpoint. As for Democrats, they're arguing that Republicans are attempting to fight state rights. But they say that the fact of the matter is this, that most recipients who receive SNAP benefits are already working. So why introduce another piece of legislation? And the truth is that the American people are struggling not because of state rules, but because of the rising costs in food prices. That's what they're saying. And one Democrat who also didn't want to be named um, said this regarding the negotiation process between Democrats and Republicans. This person said, and I, I don't know if it's a, a male or female, this person said, and I quote, we need to be prepared for a showdown on food security. And right now, we're not ready. So this is coming from a Democrat. It says we're not even ready for this negotiation. So I don't know where we're going to go from here, but here's what I can tell you regarding this. Democrats are banking on the uh, the idea that Republicans are not going to let the U.S. government default on its debts. This is going to come sometime in you know, June or July. I don't know if Republicans will. I have no clue, but I'm worried about it because I think they will. Democrats are also banking on the notion that Republicans will be more willing to negotiate on the, the federal budget once we get closer to that September deadline. Right now, we're a little ways away. We got so many other issues to get to even before we get to the uh, the, the federal budget uh, that expires or well, ends on September 31st. But the truth is that many Republicans have said that they will let the government default if their only other option is to vote in favor of additional spending and more taxes. So that's what's concerning at the moment is we may see some lawmakers, some Republicans be like, yeah, we'll just, we're just going to let the government default. There's no other option because we can't continue to keep raising the debt ceiling, right? Keep pushing this country further and further into debt, which we're never going to be able to pay off. So they're saying our best option, if Democrats don't decide uh, or decide that they are not willing to work with the other party, is they're just going to let the government default. And I can tell you at that point, that would mean chaos. Okay? And somebody asked me you know, the other day, why would it matter if the government defaults? Because we do this every year. And the truth of the matter is this, the government has never defaulted on its debts. The government has had to shut down because we didn't have a, a federal budget. It wasn't agreed upon. So those are two completely different things. So let's not get those confused because again, that could be devastating, not only to the US economy, but to the global economy as well. So let me get to some of these questions really quick. Um, <clears throat> uh, Hagen's, Hagen says, will there be more banks failing? Here's the issue. Um, and this is something that I brought up before as well, is I, I do believe there are going to be more banks failing. I don't know which banks will. Um, you are, and again, this isn't financial advice, but you should be fairly safe by putting your money into uh, one of the bigger banks, okay? 
and I'm not gonna say which banks, but go with probably one of the top five, you should be safe because if one of the top five banks fails, I guarantee you the smaller banks are gonna fail as well. There will be a ripple effect, okay? So yes, I do think more banks will fail. Um, Sonia Fox says reduced. I'm disabled and income is limited. The low and fixed income shouldn't lose these benefits. And and, and I completely agree with you. Uh, you know, should the lower income households lose their benefits? No, they shouldn't. But here's the issue. Uh, when it comes to food assistance, it's 100% funded by the U.S. government. Okay, uh, un, Unlike you know Social Security or Medicare, where there's a specific tax for it. So I think that's why lawmakers are fighting over this is because you know, even though, yes, we pay into it from our taxes, it's not specifically set aside for that. So that's part of the problem. And, and I, I don't think low income households should be fighting just to put food on the table. This should be, you know, it is a necessity. But again, this is, you know, this is the US government. We don't do anything, uh, you know, 100% correct. Uh, disabled should receive benefits regardless. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, one person says, Vicki Austin says, quit sending so much money to other countries, and then our country could take care of its own people. Exactly. It's not that difficult. Keep your money in-house. You should be able to take care of your people. Um, let's see. Uh, Jerry uh, Moriarty says, with the millions of new immigrants, we are going to have to reduce benefits. Uh, we're going to have to reduce benefits so more people can get it. Unfortunately, that's true. And, and that's tough to say, but if... If we see, and you've probably seen the videos, uh, you know, I didn't report on this one, but if you've seen all the people that have been trying to get across the border, I think they said it was like tens of thousands of people are just trying to get across the border. That's concerning. And that's very concerning because what if all these people come across? What are we going to do then? We have to figure out a way to pay for them because that's kind of the way our policies are set up. Um, let's see. Uh, Patriot Southern says SNAP needs to go. Here, here's the thing regarding uh, SNAP benefits is some people say yes, that SNAP benefits should go. But the other thing is if SNAP benefits goes, where is that money going to be allocated to? Because And this is something that Republicans have brought up as well is, okay, let's increase the, the child tax credit payments. Let's increase the earned income tax credits. Let's earn, let's uh, increase all these other, uh, you know, you know, benefits or these, uh, you know, credits for the American people, and we'll get rid of SNAP benefits. But at the same time, in order to get those other, uh, those other, you know, credits, you got to file your taxes. And for some people that only make, you know, five thousand, ten thousand dollars a year, they're not going to file taxes. So again, it, it creates another problem there. Uh, Sonia Fox says, I haven't been able to work since uh, I turned thirty. Due to coming down with chronic illness, I would rather be able to work if I could. It gets frustrating. Uh, you'll be in my prayers, Christine. Um, so as far as people wanting to work but can't, here's the other issue. We are seeing a lot of uh, you know older Americans that are pretty much being forced to go and retire, forced to collect Social Security. Not that they want to, they're being forced to. This is also a problem because some people want to work. Uh, I have family members that they would love to be able to work if they could, but they just can't move. Their body's just aching. They've been working, you know, 40, 50 years. They don't want to collect social security. They don't want to sit there at home, but that's their only option. So again, it's troubling there as well. Um, Linda Esposito says, this country is a complete mess. Stop helping everyone and expect the Americans to pay and raise taxes. I, I would hate to have to pay more in taxes. Feel like I pay quite a bit already, but and that's part of the problem. What if we do have to pay more in taxes? And nobody wants to do it. And and I know a lot of people uh, say this, and I've seen so many uh, you know different TikTok uh, accounts where they go and ask people, hey, you know, uh, would you be happy if you got an additional uh, twelve hundred dollar stimulus check? And everyone's like, yeah, I'd be I'd be so happy, I'd be so excited for it. Okay, great. Well, it could potentially be coming, but you will have to pay that back in your taxes. And everyone's like, I don't know, you know, I want it, but I'm not paying more in taxes. That's kind of the issue is if we get more benefits, we have to pay more in taxes or we have to reduce spending. Or again, this is where the negotiations go back to. Um, let's see. Um, Sydney Spiker says, one minute you say it's go it's going good. 
and and now you say it's going bad which one is it uh, to be honest some things are going good some things are going bad as far as uh, you know some of these benefit programs some of the social spending programs uh, we could see cuts and, and even though Republicans you know former president Donald Trump uh, you know speaker Kevin McCarthy they've said you know we don't want to make cuts to Social Security and Medicare well you look at the you look at the facts you look at the numbers and it, it might be something that we have to consider not do but we have to consider what is the alternative if we don't do that so uh, you know and you're 100 right some sometimes I'm like this is good news this is really good news and other times like oh man this isn't good and a lot of times it, it's, it might be you know different topics again earlier today it was on inflation inflation went from 6.4 percent down to six we saw some uh, slowing of inflation uh, for food um, you know energy uh, you know shelter was pretty much you know in line with expectations but again that's that was somewhat good news is we're not seeing uh, more inflation or it's not you know ramping back up but the bad news is if we do see inflation uh, you know kind of stick and stick around that six percent it's going to screw over millions of Americans let's see what else um, one person says our power just jumped uh, SSD botched surgery and my snap payment delayed today people are freaking out there's a lot of people freaking out okay uh, and and I Sorry about a what a what a botched surgery uh, and yes power, it, you know I've I've heard from people that are paying uh, just this year double what they paid last year, that's crazy. Um, let's see, I am totally 100% disabled and have to live on $1,500 a month with rent and utilities and what food for me uh, and my dog and still get uh, can't get assistance uh, and being a vet doesn't even count. I think that's so Mike Thomas first off thanks for uh, thanks for fighting for the country um, I think that is crazy that vets are getting screwed over and, and I have a I have a tough time with this and and I've helped out vets you know you know many times there's uh, you know veteran uh, stores that I will go to whether it's you know it's a like, kind of like a convenience store or a retail store and I will go to those stores and, and buy stuff there it's kind of like a you know a thrift store and I'll go to these these kinds of stores and buy stuff because these stores are supporting the vets and vets are coming in, they're getting jobs. And so, you know, I'll do whatever I can to support people that are fighting for this country. Because again, I don't think this country is fighting for, or the, the government's fighting for, uh, you know, these people either. So, um, JX says, Republicans have no plan only to obstruct as always. <laughs> you know, I kind of agree. Uh, is there really a plan? I think they do have a plan. Uh, is their plan, is it um, realistic? I, I don't think so. Is Democrats' plan realistic? I don't think so. Uh, nobody wants that to kind of create that bipartisan bill. And I think that's what's very difficult is right now, who knows what's going to happen? You know, I wish I could tell you that you know somebody has a plan, but honestly, I don't think either one really do. They're trying to feel out the other party and then they'll, they'll go from there. Um, if, if, if we could give, so Sony Fox says, if we could give the low and fixed income more to live on, uh, we, uh, so we uh, much need these programs, just the medical insurance and focus on fixing both on Medicare and Medi Medicaid and Medicare. Um, yeah, you know, trying to, trying to fix any of these programs, it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, you know, I wish it was, you know, easier, uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's not that easy because again, you know, the, the way our government set up, Congress has to pass these bills uh, and the House has to pass the same bill that the Senate has to pass. And then it goes over to the president and they have to sign it. Having, uh, you know, what, 300 and some or what, 400 some people, whatever it is, um, you know, in the, in the House of Representatives, having 100 people in the Senate, it's very difficult to get anything passed. And so this is supposed to be the year of, uh, of uh, Social Security and Medicare. Honestly, I don't know if we're going to see that. You know, hopefully we do, but again, who knows? Um, uh, Curtis uh, Teague says, "Here's a fact you should mention: the, ma the majority, the majority of bills the Republicans want to put out, they want w work requirements, and, and it is true. Okay, this, this is all this is all true. Um, let's see. Uh, Little Stinky says they need to use the other CPI." That's part of the problem is, and uh, there's a few people that call it the CP lie, and well, 
There's a reason why. Is, are these numbers actually factual? Some say, no, they're not. But again, who knows? We will find out very soon. But again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing.